Hey everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm joined today by Nathan Parker Smith, band leader and composer of music for eclectic instrumentation in unique settings. Nathan is here to show us how to use mixed meters to create interest and variety. Basically, there's three main reasons I use mixed meters uh, in complex time signatures. One is for um, a piece that's specifically in a complex time signature. Say, so, oh, this piece is 7, 4, 11, 8, 17, 16, whatever it is, that's kind of the identity of the piece. Another reason I might use mixed meters um, is to better fit a lyric or melody. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is a third reason I usually use mixed meters, and that's to extend or shorten phrase lengths to create interest and um, vary the form or the phrases. So um, this is a technique we're going to talk about today. Basically, a uh, very effective way to do this is to add or subtract a beat to the end of a phrase. Um, so your standard 16 beat phrase, make it a little longer, make it a little shorter. Um, so um, I'm going to show you some examples of uh, my music that did this, um, discuss some techniques and tips for doing this in an effective and, and subtle way also, so it's not too obvious. Um, and then a couple examples of how this works in compositional practice. So this is a piece entitled Rhetoric Machine. Uh, it's from an album I did a while back called Not Dark Yet. For the entire talk today, I, I reduced everything into just mostly bass lines or maybe the key um, components so we could easily see what we're working with because we're basically focused on rhythm today. Uh, so this piece is um, basically four measure phrases 16 beats, it's in 4-4, four, four. except uh, at the end of the phrases, I added three eighth notes. Next, what we're going to look at is uh, shortening a phrase. So this is another four bar phrase. It happens to be in five, four. So a little more complex than the last one. Um, and so instead of uh, having 20 beats in this, there's 19 beats. The last measure of the phrase is four, four. My favorite things to do is use this technique in solo sections. Um, oftentimes, uh, for the two examples we're going to listen to as a rhythmic hook at the end of a phrase, I think, especially when you're using um, mixed meters or complex time signatures for the solo section, it gives the soloist a real good grounding point at the end of a phrase to say, hey, we're at the end of the form, let's go back to the top. And here's another similar example. This one um, is a longer, more open solo section. And I think the hook at the end uh, really helps get the solos back uh, at the top of the form each time. All right, so that was using um, mixed meters and solo sections. Um, now I'm gonna talk about a couple tips and techniques that can help achieve this uh, in a very organic way. Um, one of the things I really like to do um, is hide the bar lines, hide the downbeats so that the listener upon first listen might not say, oh, hey, they threw a three, four bar in there. They threw a five, four bar in there. Maybe they're tapping their foot along and then all of a sudden their foot's on the wrong beat and maybe they'll take a second listen. Um, so <clears throat> when I'm shortening a phrase, uh, for example, in this example, I have a four bar phrase, the fourth measure is a three, four instead of four, four. I will delay um, the downbeat when it comes back around. So you can see in the 
uh, fourth and fifth measure, fourth and fifth measure is a bar of three four, uh, and the downbeat, which would be the top of the phrase again, is on the and of one. What this does is for the listener because they're not looking at the music, they don't know the uh, time signatures or where the bar lines are. <clears throat> that and of one maybe sounds like an and of four if it was a bar of four four. In this case, it's and of one because we had a bar of three four. So by the time it comes back around again, something sounds a little off, something sounds unique, um, but it's kind of hard to tell exactly what it is. Uh, and then the next example, uh, we can see a very similar thing. This is when you extend the phrase by adding a beat or a 16th note or a triplet or whatever, however much you want to extend it. Um, I like to anticipate. So again, this could be in the fourth measure, the bar of five, four. This could either be um, the and of five, like it's written, or maybe it's a bar of four and it feels like a delay um, and it's on the and of one of the bar of four, just like the previous example. Uh, so this really helps disguise what you're doing and make this um, technique just kind of sound a little less obvious and a little more organic. How do you do this in practice from scratch? Uh, I'm gonna talk through a couple techniques, a couple ways, and uh, we're gonna start with this real basic rhythm that I'm sure we've all used a thousand times, uh, dotted quarter, eighth tied to a half. I do like this rhythm because it does have um, enough of that anticipation to keep it driving forward. But in this form, it's pretty boring. Four, four, uh, every measure repeats. I thought for this, instead of extending the phrase, I might wanna um, shorten the phrase. And I think, well, this works really well. Um, the dotted quarter, eighth tied to a half, kind of leads itself to this um, feeling in three a lot of times. So um, if you look in the last measure there, uh, I think the two dotted quarters um, work really well and you anticipate, or you don't anticipate, you actually jump on a beat one uh, with the next measure. Uh, and uh, I think it flows really well. Adding a little more in the second, in the next example, um, you can see it's uh, two measures, three measures of four and a measure of three, just like we had before. Um, but one thing that you can do to help um, disguise, like we talked about, um, is delaying uh, downbeats. Better example in here of that is on measure five, where um, the bass line on the low D there um, is on two. Um, so it's hard to tell for the listener, like, was that a bar four and, and a delay or a bar three and an anticipation? A little interest uh, in the third measure, uh, instead of playing uh, the same rhythm for the third time, just a little delay uh, and it really helps um, create some interest. We will listen to this. I, I have a little MIDI recording of this, but I'll talk through it first. I just added a real simple um, minor pentatonic sort of thing um, for a bass line. Um, I extended, um, well, expanded on what I was doing before with this phrase. So if you look at the last uh, measure of each line, <clears throat> it's a bar three, and then it's a bar of four, and it's a bar of five, and it's a bar of six. So. So you can see we started with just a dotted quarter eighth rhythm. Um, and then we did a couple changes, added a couple uh, different bass notes. And all of a sudden from that one single measure of, re of repeated rhythm, uh, here's an entire uh, 16 bar phrase um, that I think upon first listen, you might not necessarily say, hey, that's an, uh, a unique time signature. That's a mixed meter. Uh, but when you uh, listen to it again, you might say, oh, huh. That downbeat didn't fall where I thought it was going to fall. Um, so that's um, how to use mixed meters to create interest and variety in a form. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos down below. To watch our full-length events and participate in live Q&As with our presenting artists, head to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.